Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to Using Unity UI Toolkit. So the essential features inside a Unity project include UI, input, audio, graphics, and then of course, scripting it all together using C Sharp. UI is a key part of these essentials. Let's take a look at this UI system. I'm Sam, I'm a Unity certified game developer with over 20 years of experience. I'm available for remote contract hire as an educator and as a game developer. So inside the Unity engine, there's many different systems and some systems have multiple versions or options of what you can install. So within the Unity user interface, you can choose the classic Unity UI solution, which probably has been the de facto for five or six years, and much of the content you see online uses Unity UI. However, we're going to talk about UI Toolkit. UI Toolkit is based on web standards technology and a lot of the philosophy behind that, including the box model and also separation of concerns from the layout, styling, and behavior. And unlike most systems in Unity, UI Toolkit is not game object based. We're going to see the Unity UI Builder as the window where we bring it all together. So UI Toolkit is a collection of features, resources, and tools. It is tailored for maximum performance based on web standards, as I mentioned, web technologies. It is the newest and best system, but note that it does not yet have feature parity with the Unity UI system. There are some things that currently are not natively supported but most everything we wanna do is fully supported. So we'll take a look at the assets. That is the UI document. This is something like HTML, defines the structure of the UI. Then there's style sheets, which is a Unity style sheet format, USS. That's something like CSS, and allows you to set the visuals of those components that you have on the screen. And then we'll use C Sharp, of course, to do the behavior. For example, clickable buttons or populating text fields dynamically. UI Builder is the window that will open up. I'll make it full screen here so we can take a look. It is the UI authoring that has a what you see is what you get approach. Makes it very easy for iterative development. And while this screenshot looks like it might be the Unity editor because it has different layouts, windows, and areas of interest, this is just the UI Builder itself. So there's so much going on here, I tend to use a second monitor or just go full screen, which is what I'm gonna do today when we take a look. So here we are using the LTS version of Unity 2022, which as of recording this video is the latest version of LTS. So in it, UI Toolkit comes automatically added and you don't need to add it as a package. So sitting here in a new project with an empty scene, I'll start creating UI Toolkit. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is create an empty game object. I like to call it UI document, and then we're gonna add a component called UI document. Now, UI document is the one game object in this system. So remember I mentioned it's not game object based. Most of the elements, the text, the buttons, et cetera, are not game objects themselves, but all together that layout needs to plug into the scene somehow, and that's using this one game object. So here I'm going to need a panel settings and then what they call a visual tree asset. So in the project, I will create a new, got to scroll down here to the bottom, UI toolkit, and I'll create the panel settings asset. That creates it there. Then I'm going to right click again and create and go down to the same menu again. And here choose a UI document. The first time that happens, it needs to generate some files, most of which uh, sit kind of in the project repo. The one that we see here in the assets is this template itself. Now there's a few different names. Notice it was called UI Toolkit in one spot. It was called Layout or UXML in another spot. Here it says Template. So there's a few different names for this. But again, this is something like the HTML markup. So with those two created, I will drag our panel settings into the UI document, and I will drag the template into the visual tree asset slot, and then I'll double click it. Now here it's going to open up, this is the UI builder. So let's just take a very quick look at what we've got here. First of all, here in the viewport, this, we can click it and we can choose match the game view. So now I'm using mouse wheel to zoom out. 
but it now matches whatever the game view of your game is. So as you're working here, you can get a bit of preview within the aspect ratio you're building for. Then I'm going to use from the library down here, we've got lots of different choices of things that we can drag out. The One of the gotchas when you're first getting into this is most everything you're gonna use and drag out is a visual element. So just by dragging out visual element here, that gives you one. It's very universal and flexible. You can apply it to many different use cases. It's something like a div in the HTML world. So I'm gonna grab it here and I'm gonna rename it by double clicking. And I, my convention that I like is to call this one screen. And then I'm gonna drag out another child and I'm gonna rename this one content. Those are names that I come up with myself. Both of them still are visual elements. So for the screen, what I can do here is give it some properties here on the right in the inspector. There's all sorts of different properties you can use, and they're all inspired by cascading style sheets from web standards. So what I'd like to do is give a little bit of padding or margin around the entire screen. So I'll go down here to margin and padding, and I'll just choose 50. You can see now that I've got a border around the entire screen. So now as I add things into the content, I can have them stick to the corners of the content, but with a nice little bit of empty space there toward the end, it just makes it look nice. So let's say we wanted to create a button and just put it in the corner of the screen. So I'll use the content node here, and then I will grab a button. So we've got lots of different choices. I'll just choose the regular old button. So I'll rename the text here to hello world and I will keep, keep the button name as hello world button. All right, so if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that the text is getting previewed there, but it doesn't quite match what I wanna do. So what I wanna have it do is stick to the upper left corner, no matter where the screen gets resized to. So to do that here, I'm gonna go to my hello world button, and there's lots of different settings I can use here, but I'll use position, absolute, and set the left to zero pixels and the top to zero pixels. Now that's going to anchor it up there and then I'll make it a bit bigger. Let's go down to size and we'll set it to, let's say 300 by 300 pixels. Each time you're setting pixels, you could also choose percent if you want, that's another option. And then let's choose the uh, text here and make the font much, much bigger. So now when I close the UI builder, we can see that as we were building that, it was automatically populating the live game screen. So you can get a fantastic preview inside UI builder. Anytime you wanna double check the accuracy at runtime, you can come here and look at the game window. And then of course you can click the play to see the end user's experience. For most of my workflows, I see the UI builder looks the same as the game in edit mode and the same at runtime. So you get a very nice consistent look across them. There'll be some small exceptions here and there. Now notice when I hover over here, I get a slight brightening of that button. Let's see what else we could do there. We'll go back to our template and we're gonna create our first and only style for this demo before we wrap things up. What you can do to style these different elements is come up here and choose to add a new style. So I'll call this one button. I'm gonna give this a my styles name. And now I can drag that button onto our button. Then if I duplicate the button and I'm gonna rename it, there's special pseudo classes, again, borrowed from CSS that we can use here. So we'll give this one the name button colon hover. And now anytime that our pointer or mouse hovers over, we can change the effects here. So here I'm gonna give this a slightly different look. Let's say that I wanna go to the transform and I wanna have it scale up to 1.1. I'll do a quick save there to refresh the view with that hover pseudo state. And then one last thing, I'll go back to the base state and I'll go to transition animations and I will just set the duration to be one quarter of a second. Then up here, I can hit this preview button. And as I mouse over, may not be able to see it too obviously here in the video recording, but it is scaling from 1.0 to 1.1 every time I mouse over. 
And by clicking that preview, it gives me those hover previews. I'll go back and run the actual app. And here we see the same effect is applied at runtime. So that's it. We've seen how to create a UI document, how to use the layout inside the UI builder, a little bit about setting the properties over there on the right and setting some styles. There's much, much more that you can do with UI Toolkit, including scripting it with C Sharp. We'll take a look at that in the future. For now, thanks very much.